Hello and welcome to Cushy TV, the straight talking YouTube channel where my specialist subjects are, of course, you might start to know me by now, of boxing and golf. Of course, I do interview people of all other interest. So um, I've got some more material here for you today. Of course, please remember to click and subscribe. I need you to keep on coming this way and I'll keep on giving the material that way. So anyway, without further ado, um, today I'm focusing on um, heavyweight champions of the world. The greatest prize, the greatest prize in sport it's known as. It's um, deemed as better than the Formula One champion, winning the Grand National, World Snooker champion, World Cup winning team. This is deemed as the greatest prize. I've probably forgot loads of your sports out there. Sorry. The Open Champion, um, arguably, maybe not to me, maybe the Open Championship uh, might be even better than the Heavyweight Championship of the world. But it's been largely, widely known as the greatest prize in sport and all the bits to come with it. Now we're right on the edge. Um, this video will be coming slightly post the eagerly anticipated fight between the two Brits, the Gypsy King, Tyson Fury, and Jamaican born, now London's very own Dillian White. Okay, so we can see what's at stake there. Huge, huge prize. So can you imagine now that if we're an heavyweight boxer, and can you put yourself in position of sort of Tyson Fury and Dillian White, the winner? What it entails, of course, they've got families and children and friends, but they've got all the powers in the world. Some of these heavyweight champions weren't necessarily married of his history yesteryear. So they've got all the beautiful women at their feet, they've got all the cars, they've got the luxurious things, they've got the homes, they've got the notoriety. They're fit, strong men. They have got the world at their feet. The biggest prize in sport. Well, today I'm going to focus on four stories and sadly they end in tragedy four cursed heavyweight champions of the world yes they had a moment in the sun the greatest prize in sport but i'm going to go through their lives and sadly sadly report and tell the brief stories of these four heavyweight champions that were somewhat cursed or their lives ended in tragedy tragedy cursed it's a similar thing anyway sit back and allow me to tell the unfortunate stories of these once great men okay so please allow me to bring in the first heavyweight champion of the world that had such a sad tragic ending he was born in 1958 in Louisville, Kentucky, the very same town as the greatest Muhammad Ali. Yes, uh, they produced two heavyweight champions, the greatest and this man himself. Born 1958, he was, of course, um, Greg Page. Greg Page um, had a good amateur career. He was tipped to go to the Ipes as a professional that he did. Um, to a professional in 1979 and in 1984 he toppled the world. He became the WBA champion of the world by beating South Africa's Jerry Cotia in eight rounds. Yes, so here he is. He's the champion of the world. Um, he lost his title. But you can imagine now of today's fighters, if you're champion of the world, you'd have an agent, you'd have a marketer. So you'd be out doing dinner speeches. You wouldn't necessarily have to fight um, if you've got just even somebody half sensibly, even if your money's dwindled. Um, you still have a constant flow coming in with a decent, half decent agent with dinner speeches, etc., etc. Anyway, Pedro Silva, formidable, decent heavyweight, having lost um, a pint decision, losing his title to uh, Tony Tubbs. And anyway, moving forward, he was still a, a decent fighter, but he never regained his heavyweight championship of the world. He did um, 
guide Oliver McCall to beating Lennox Lewis, the heavyweight champion. He'd done some training, but um, finances uh, forced him back out of retirement. And um, Paige was now boxing, some age behind him, and lack of activity reflexes had disappeared a little bit. Uh, he was beating some lowly rate fighters, but when he went up a level, it just seemed to um, defeats were coming his way somewhat. But the saddest thing um, happened to Page was in 2001, he took on a gentleman by the name of Del Crow, a young ambitious heavyweight, wasn't usually highly ranked, but a decent enough all-round okay fighter. Um, over 10 rounds in Pill Casino, Kentucky. And in the 10th round, I've watched the fight. It was, a, it was an okay fight, it was a decent fight, and he seemed to be boxing nicely. But he walked onto a punch, um, did page, and he got KO'd in round 10. And this, unfortunately, is where the tragedy starts for Page. He's fighting for just $1,500. I think approximately the rate then was a little under a thousand quid in our terms. He gets KO'd by a right hand and as I say, the tragedy then unfolds. Uh, it's a bit like any of you guys from the UK remembering the Michael Watson situation. He was completely unattended for 45 minutes. Uh, they had a complete inadequate doctor ringside. He didn't, basically didn't know anything more about the situation than myself, by all accounts. They didn't even have a stretcher, no oxygen. And it resulted in brain surgery for Page, and to which he recovered in terms of his life, but he was left with horrific injuries. He was um, bound to a wheelchair. In fairness to Crow, um, I did think they were, I've seen the footage, they were overreacting in their victory and not paying any attention to Page. That was my initial reaction. But I've since learned that he did continuously support Page. He clearly wouldn't have been aware of the consequences. And I think it's been a change of face for a lot of fighters that they you know, before celebrating too much, go to the aid or at least certainly make sure, whilst you're not qualified to maybe do aid a fighter, but to make sure and respect it, they're okay. But Crow did, um, in his defence, continue to support Page. And unfortunately, the real, real tragedy again, um, I've seen some pictures of him small in that venues, even in his wheelchair, bless him. But it, the real tragedy happened when he fell out of his bed and due to his complications of his immobility. He actually laid and died in an awkward position after falling off the bed, aged just 50 years of age. So, um, tragedy there for the former champion of the world. Let's give him a fault and take a picture at the once loved, admired, heavyweight champion of the world, Greg Page, aged just 50. Yes, our next heavyweight champion, the man that won the greatest prize in sport, um, only to end in tragedy, was born in 1954 in Norwich, Jamaica. Of course, it was Trevor Burbick. Having had a successful amateur career, winning numerous medals, Burbick turned to the pro ranks and based himself in the United States of America. And his career was going along nicely, but um, Burbick, with the US fans, would lose massive popularity. And this was due to the fact that in 1981, he boxed and beat an aging Muhammad Ali. And he was accused by the mighty Iron Mike Tyson and Larry Arms, respectively, of not pulling up the handbrake when he had a clearly um, diminishing shadow of his former self in that of Muhammad Ali. He continued on pounding, he won a unanimous decision. Um, I can't help but think how tough Ali was, because um, this man in question was still a tough, tough fighter. Um, so that sort of, um, he didn't win any fans by beating Ali. Of course, he was so popular with the US crowd and, and all over the world, in fact. 
Um, but anyway, he continued his career. I suppose it wasn't his fault that Ali was um, failing a bit. And he was such a great fight. I suppose, how could you really take your, your foot off the throttle against somebody so great as Ali? You never knew when he was pulling out a rope of dope or whatever trick next, I suppose. So anyway, but he, he fell victim of that. He got in some hot water with the law and he got deported back to Jamaica and he went from Jamaica to Canada, to Canada back to America and continued his career. Anyway, um, and continued very well, beating some very good fighters on the way up until he got his opportunity to take on Pitlin Thomas for the WBC Championship of the World and there Burbick delivered and won the championship of the world, the greatest prize in sport. Um, he lost it shortly back to the mighty Iron Mike Tyson in that infamous round two knockout. But he continued fighting well, did um, Burbick post that fight. But again, he got landed in some hot water with the authorities in the US. And this time he was deported back to his roots of Jamaica, back to his own town of Norwich, Jamaica, and uh, he continued doing his preaching and regular church visits, and of all places, um, it will be the grounds of a church where this once heavyweight champion of the world would meet his tragic end. It was reported a dispute over some land between himself and his sister um, had taken place, and whilst visiting the church, once walking out the church, in the church grounds, two men lay in wait, and one of those men would be Harold, Bur Harold Burbeck, his nephew, wielding an iron bar, and an accomplice alongside him, also wielding an iron bar. They set out a ferocious attack, and sadly, and very tragically, aged just 52, the former heavyweight champion of the world, will be brutally murdered. Oh, terrible, tragic ending of the life of Trevor Burbeck. Let's just take a pause and a thought for the once champion of the world. Okay, lifting the greatest prize in sport again, of course. Um, born in Arkansas in 1969 relative of the legendary cowboy John Wayne, of course it was Tommy the Duke Morrison. Tommy the Duke Morrison had absolutely everything at his feet. The hard punching, two-handed forward fighter Tommy Morrison with a vicious left hook was going through the pro ranks um, destroying people in his way with his attacking style. He was he was deemed as a white version of Mike Tyson, of course, in the same era. And that fight was massively set. And nothing was holding Morrison back. Um, his attacking style would allow him to walk onto punches. He did fall victim of a defeat after blowing out some, I think, losing gas towards, um, towards the end of the fight against Ray Mercer. But I don't think it was anything but Chinny, he just walked on him as his style when he got blocked a couple of times. Um, but in 1993, um, do you remember that devastating knockout that George Foreman delivered against Michael Mora to be the oldest champion of the world? Well, of course, now Foreman's a champion of the world, but he lays his WBO title on the line to the much loved Tommy the Duke Morrison and Morrison delivers um, when a clear points decision over George Foreman to win the greatest prize in sport. Yes, so here it was, all the things that you would expect. The movies, he played in the Rocky movie, of course he was Tommy Gunn, um, the up and coming fighter that Sylvester Stallone, Rocky would look after. And, um, you know, with his uh, long blonde hair and good looks and the body to match and all the bits with it and laid at his feet all the temptations of life and um, yes sadly uh, he did defend his title successfully and he lost it to Britain's Michael 
Ben, the US based fighter, and a very um, surprising defeat in round one. But his career was picking back up, and he was tipped to still, still go on to fight Mike Tyson for the championship of the world. But out of the blue, he's wild living. He's fun for life. Somehow or another, he contracted the HIV virus, which potentially then was and could have been deadly. However, he was given a second lifeline. Another superstar in a different field, Magic Johnson, also contracted the HIV virus. And these two men had received um, groundbreaking medical treatment and there was a while when they went on tour as role models um, saying it's necessary with the right diet, the right foods, the right medication, etc, etc. You could continue to live a life. Well, of course, Magic Johnson had the money to fund his medical treatment. There's no NHS in America, as there is in the UK. And so did Morrison have enough money. But Morrison's life took a downward spiral when Instead of taking the medical drugs provided, he started taking the recreational taboo drugs. So he neglected his real treatment, got hooked on drugs. And sadly, you can see here the difference between the prime Tommy, the Duke Morrison, and how his life sadly ended in 2013 aged just 43. Let's take a pause and look at the former champion Tommy Morrison. Yes and the final figure in these heavyweight champion of the world tragedies born in Arkansas in 1932. Of course it was the brilliant Jabbing, left-handed, tough man, Sonny Liston. Sonny Liston would make his way through the ranks and of course he would take the title to become the heavyweight champion of the world from Floyd Patterson in 1962 at the age of 30. Liston was reported to have been um, connected and running with the mob back in the day and still to this day he defended his title against the greatest Muhammad Ali and the granite chinned Liston it was reported that you could hit him with a baseball bat and you'd still struggle knocking him to the floor but in round one he lost his heavyweight championship of the world to Muhammad Ali which many to this very day deem it as the Phantom Punch. Many Brits have deemed it as the Powder Puff Punch. Um, and beyond that, of course, it's been deemed a fix. That much I don't know. It just makes good debate. But the brilliant Liston did lose a return. He retired on his chair in round five, I think, maybe six against Ali. He continued fighting and he was still, um, at the age of 38, still a leading contender. And in 1970, on the very last penultimate day of the year, um, the 30th of, of December, his wife had taken a two-week trip, only to come back home, and she could smell a bad stench in the house when she went in. She saw her husband, Liston, um, laying clearly unresponsive and dead beside the bed and um, she alerted uh, an attorney, a lawyer as we know them, and she didn't alert the police for some three hours, which led this cloud of mystery hanging over. The many reports in Liston's ending was that he had failed with his head. You know, hard to believe in this really tough man. Heroin overdose, uh, believe it or not. Um, and then that was sort of played down, but there was only minute traces found in his body. But we'll never truly know, only those involved, I think, that brought the end to the once fearsome, great, 
Sonny Liston have actually boxed with a bullet still embedded in his body through um, a street fight, gunshot wound. So lifting the greatest prize of all, age just 38, clouded in mystery, Sonny Liston's life tragically ended. Let's take a pause and have a look at the once great man. Okay, thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed um, the history of this boxing, whilst clearly it was not an happy story, an happy ending, but I hope it's given you some insight and knowledge. And to think that what we would think is a bed of roses. Yeah, the greatest prize in sport. And to think how it can all go wrong. Sadly, it did for these four great champions of the world. Click and subscribe. Tune in for next time. Box Clever.